today we are going to study about development of chick so before we begin and study about different stages which are involved in development of chick let's study about anatomy of chicken egg so on your right side you can see an egg diagram which is labeled with different parts let's begin with the first part that is egg shell the outer brown boundary you can see so the egg shell is actually bumpy and grainy in texture when you touch and feel with your fingers there are a lot of pores a thousand of pores present and according to some books the amount of these pores are almost 17,000 this egg shell it is made up of uh, calcium carbonate impregnated with proteins and it is a semi permeable membrane which means that the air and the moisture they can pass through these pores let's talk about the other two parts we combine these two parts to discuss the outer membrane and the inner membrane you can see these two lines over here so the outer membrane is a uh, very thin and it sticks to the shell of the egg when you break the shell you can actually see a very thin layer sometimes you can see it attached with the egg shell so that's the outer membrane and what about the inner membrane that's also a very thin membrane uh, but it sticks to the albumin of the egg so uh, sometimes it happens that when we break the egg we can easily peel the shell but still the egg yolk or the albumin does not comes out because there is another thin layer which is holding it that is the inner membrane while function of these both membranes is same that they protect the egg from outside bacteria entering through the pores of the shell next is albumin over here you can see this this whole part which is known as albumin and we also call it as, as egg white now this egg white it consists of water and protein and this part of the egg it contains the lowest amount of fat now this watery environment um, it protect the egg from mechanical damage and drying so uh, the albumin it's uh, it is also a source of nutrient it is uh, eventually it is consumed during the development next you can see is a wetland membrane now wetland membrane over here you can see it is covering the yolk so wetland membrane it is a clear casing it surrounds the yolk and it should be very strong it should be strong enough to uh, keep the yolk from molting which means that if this uh, wetland membrane is not strong enough then this yolk can actually move to the egg white so next is yolk now what is yolk it is actually the major source of vitamins minerals and proteins so it is also you can say that it is a place where eggs fat and cholesterol they are located now egg yolk uh, it comes in different colors it has a range of colors and these colors uh, are like from bright yellow to darker orange so definitely there must be some reason that why does the color change from bright yellow to darker orange so there are two basic reasons the first reason is the breed of the chicken and the second reason is the feed of the chicken so these two factors they are responsible for the color change of the yolk the other in this picture you can see over here a spot this is known as blastoderm it is a layer of cells that develop after an egg is fertilized so we are going to uh, learn about blastoderm later in our other slides next is skeleza now what is skeleza over here you can see thin cord like structures they are twisted and they are they can be find on both ends of the yolk so what they are actually doing they are keeping the yolk in place um, and <coughs> where is this place it is keeping it in the center of the egg 
so they can help to indicate how fresh the egg is so this is also one of the major uh, importance of this chalaza so without going into complications that how does it indicate um, that the egg is fresh or not I just uh, simply tell you that if you break the egg and you can easily identify these two cords you can easily see them then it means the egg is fresh but if it is difficult to indicate it is difficult to find that where are where are these two cords then it means the egg is not fresh at all the last part is air cell now the air cell it actually lies between the two layers which two layers the inner membrane and the outer membrane now when does this air cell actually forms when the hen lay eggs and then it takes some time to cool down now the time between laying an egg and cooling it down during this duration this air cell actually forms this air cell is formed and you can also call it as air pocket so this air pocket it enlarges uh, during the development as air moves through pores in this shell to replace water loss so as the egg ages this space increases now here is a short video uh, which I would like you all to see that how does the air sac it actually works so you can see over here that uh, as hatching approaches the chick penetrates the air pocket with its beak and the lung inflates and the chicken it uh, begins to breathe from the air sac so while still it's uh, exchanging pores uh, across the vascular uh, extra embryonic membranes you can see it again see how does the chick it penetrates in the air sac and then it keeps on breathing and then it tries to break the wall afterwards when it has to hatch so now we move to forming a chicken egg that how does a chicken egg is formed so unlike most female animals uh, they have two functioning ovaries but the chicken it usually have one so what happens that the right ovary it stops developing at what stage when the female chick hatches but now the left one it continues to mature it means that one of the ovaries working in the chicken so it contains this ovary it actually contains several thousand tiny ova over here you can see in the diagram so it contains uh, several thousand tiny ovas and each ovum it's within its own follicle so when the female reaches maturity these ova develop a few at a time into yolks now what happens that when the yolk is fully developed its follicle ruptures and after the follicle ruptures what happens that the yolk it release from the ovary and it enters in fundibulum the first part over here of oviduct is known as in fundibulum and this is the entrance of oviduct now here the fertilization also occurs and all of the other parts of the egg they are added to the yolk as it passes through the oviduct and all these parts they include the uh, magnum the isthmus and the uterus and then it goes out of the hen through vagina and cloaca opening uh, here I would like to mention that as we said that the other things they are added to the yolk as it passes through the oviduct now what are those um, those other parts like chalaza like uh, albumin the shell membrane and the shell they all are formed around the yolk 
to make the complete egg and when the complete egg is made then it is laid now this complete cycle this whole complete cycle it usually requires a little more than 24 hours and when one of the egg is laid then after 30 minutes another yolk is released from the ovary and the process repeats itself and then in the next 24 hours another egg is laid okay so the fertilization and incubation the purpose of this slide is actually to show that how does um, incubator can also be used to show the different development stages of the embryo so in incubator uh, the usually regulated temperature is like between 36 to 38 and at this temperature the chick it completes development and is hatched on the 21st day now the incubator you can see over here on your left it is the automatic egg incubator so the eggs are kept inside and the temperature range is set which is uh, 36 to 38 degrees Celsius and on the right side you can see the chick embryo development over here each day development changes are shown till the 20th day and on the 21st day n the, egg, uh, the chick actually comes out of the egg now we start the cleavage stages in the chicken First of all, let's see what is cleavage. So after fertilization, the egg, it undergoes a series of mitotic division, which is actually known as cleavage. And this coidal cleavage, this type of cleavage is actually present in the chicken. So in eggs that contain a large amount of yolk, and the cytokinesis it does not divide the egg completely so you can see over here the cleavage it starts and over here you can see this spot so this cleavage actually takes place in this area only so the hen's egg uh, it consists of just a tiny patch of cytoplasm as you can see over here and it's resting on the surface of a large ball of yolk. So when the first cleavage um, occurs, over here in this picture you can see when the first cleavage occurs in hen egg, the cleavage furrows, they do not continue down through the mass of yolk. And so you over here, this the cleavage, uh, it continues. So this, this cleavage continues and it reaches to the stage of marula and blastula. So let's uh, shortly see that what is marula and blastula. The marula, see when the zygote, is, um, the conversion of the zygote into a solid ball of cells is called marula. So it means that when the cleavage continues and it reaches the stage of a solid ball of cells now that solid ball of cells is formed in this area the whole of the yolk is not involved in the division so the marula the central cells of marula they are called micromeres while the outer cells they are called megamers why because the central cells are small while the outer cells are bigger as compared to the central cells and the marula it lies closely to the yolk now the life of marula it's short so it's short-lived and soon it changes into blastula and is characterized by the presence of segmentation cavity now this segmentation cavity it is known as blastocele you see over here this cavity this is known as blastocele and the discoidal cap of the cells over here which is above blastocele this is known as blastoderm 
Now we talk about gas relation. Here we just gas relation begin. So before we begin the gas relation, let me remind you that the chick gas relation is not very simple. It's very complicated and it's a prolonged one. So because of this, uh, there exist a lot of uh, discrepancies regarding the range of process of gas relation in chicks. So there are many scientists who does not agree at one point that actually when does gas relation start? So who were they and what were the discrepancies? Let's see the first one. It's Addy in 1978 regarded the beginning of gastrulation after formation of area opaca and area pellucida. Now in our previous picture over here you can see the area pellucida and area opaca. According to Addy, the gastrulation actually begins here. That once area opaca an area pellucida is made, the gastrulation begins. Next, Balinsky and Carlson, they said that they were at the opinion of, of the opinion that formation of blast, hypoblast to be a pre-gastrular morphogenetic movement. Now, according to them, the formation of hypoblast was a pre-gastrular morphogenetic movement. But what we have to discuss on, here we would consider the formation of epiblast and hypoblast to be the starting point of gastrulation. And we, according to this, it means that we are following Gilbert. So according to Gilbert, the formation of epiblast and hypoblast is the starting point of gastrulation right so uh, there is a picture shown on your right side over here you might not easily uh, understand that how does this process is going on but let me shortly tell you before we move to the next slide and elaborate it that these numbers shown over here is the number of the cell so they continuously they are dividing and over here you can see a cavity formed which is known as subgerminal cavity then how does the um, a lot of cells they begins uh, they begin to divide and they take the place of it and then hypoblast and epiblast they separates from the yolk and they are formed in different colors now just remember that this is a schematic view of uh, cellularization in chick egg during the day it is fertilized and this all this all process is still inside the hen right so let's begin in this in this picture i hope that you will understand this whole process through this picture now at the time at the time of completion of cleavage and the formation of uh, area opaca and area pellucida the blastoderm of the chick it actually contains 20,000 cells. Now, most of the cells of area pellucida, they remain at the surface of the epiblast. You see this? So, this is the most of the cells of area pellucida that is remaining at the surface and they form the epiblast. Now, a few remaining cells, they get delaminated. Now, what does that mean, delaminated? It's a type of morphogenetic movement of the cells. So here, what type of movement the cells are following? It's delamination. So a few remaining cells, they get delaminated and they migrate individually, right? Over here, you can see they migrate individually into the subgerminal cavity. You remember over here this is a subgerminal cavity and now the cells from here they are delaminating and they are individually delaminating and they are moving into subgerminal cavity to form primary hypoblast this means that these cells have to form primary hypoblast but there is another thing as we said that they um, delaminate individually but over here you can see small islands made right so 
it is like when they delaminate they form poly invagination islands they form small groups okay so it comprises of uh, separate clusters each containing of 5 to 20 cells so it depends some make 5 some make 6 some make 8 10 12 but till 20 so 5 till 20 these cells are made over here next what they have to do is now a thin sickle shaped mass of cells take place at in the uh, at the posterior end of the embryo over here now from the collar cells a second generation now the cells which we just talked about that uh, the sickle the sickle cell the collar sickle cell generation over here so we are talking about this cell now whatever we talk further just remember that we are talking about these cells so from these collar sickle a second generation of hypoblast cells they push anteriorly forming the secondary hypoblast now remember that over here these cells which are originating from here these are secondary second generation of hypoblast cells and they are pushing anteriorly from uh, forming the secondary hypoblast now when they are extending what do they do further these cells they compress and fold primary hypoblast ahead of it see over here compress and fold you see these gray cells they were delaminating from here the epiblast and you see the green cells they are from second generation of hypoblast got it so these cells they compress and fold the primary hypoblast ahead of it now next what happens the two layered blastoderm comprising of epiblast and hypoblast you see now two layers are formed the upper one known as epiblast and this is known as hypoblast now they together join at the margin of area opaca it means they both will come and join at this part right now when they join at this part there will be a cavity formed between epiblast and hypoblast now again move to the first picture a you see over here this cavity first formed this was known as subgerminal space when it was known as subgerminal space before the formation of secondary hypoblast now after the formation of hypoblast this cavity formed over here is known as blastocele you people get it the difference between the subgerminal space formation and the blastocele formation got it now next we will be discussing about the formation of endoderm then the primitive streak primitive streak the major basic part in gastrulation so we will discuss how the cells they are going to migrate and this all process we will be discussing in our next lecture i hope that in this lecture you must have developed some concept about the area opaca, area pellucida, the blastoderm, the subgerminal space, the blastocele formation, the hypoblast formation, the epiblast formation, and then in our next lecture, we will be discussing how gastrulation continues. Thank you so much, and see you in our next, nec next lecture.